You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our mission is to help the people of God understand the Word of God. Join us each Monday and Thursday for new episode releases. Listen to our full library of content at teachmethebible.com or by downloading the Teach Me the Bible app from any app store. You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to our Genesis series. We are uh, just trekking along through Genesis, almost chapter by chapter. And today we're going to cover two chapters in in chapter 13 and 14. And so uh, we were introduced to Abraham last week, who God has promised to make into a great nation. He's going to make his name great in contrast to all the families of the earth who have become other nations, not on the Lord's team, so to speak. But Abram is going to be a special nation, a a great nation that's going to represent the Lord. And so we're going to kind of watch his story play out and, and, and sort of watch uh, I guess what happens next in the story. So you want to take us away in 13 and yeah, so, well, 13 follows 12, right? There it is. <laughs> so, so in uh, chapter 12, verse nine, right? So, uh, Abram journeyed on toward the Negev and there was a famine in the land. So he goes down to Egypt and, and what we talked about last week with that, uh, you know, he, it, it, it's the, the, the text is the story's doing a lot of things. It's, it's explaining to the reader in very Mm -hmm. clear terms, what does it mean to bless Abram? Mm -hmm. Does it mean to give him a bunch of stuff? Well, uh, no, because, you know, Pharaoh actually does that, gives him a bunch of stuff, and, and, but the Lord struck Pharaoh and his house with great plagues because of Sarah. And so you're learning that, wait a second, a promise to Abram is a promise to Sarah. Don't touch, don't Mm -hmm. touch Sarah or Sarai. And so now we're, we're back with Abram. He's journeying back uh, from Egypt. And so he went up from Egypt to, to the Negev. He's going right back to where he came from and his wife and all that belonged to him and lot with him. And Abram was very rich in livestock and silver and gold. And he went on his way uh, of his journeys from the Negev as far as Bethel to the place where his tent had been from the beginning between Bethel and I and, uh, and to the place of the altar, which he had made formerly and Abram called on the name of the Lord again. So he called, or, you know, where uh, in there he called upon the name of the Lord. And, and Lot went with Abram and also uh, his flocks and his herds and his tents. So the, the land could not sustain them while dwelling together, for their possessions were so great that they were not able to remain together. Um, uh, and there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's livestock and the herdsmen of Lot's livestock. Now the Canaanite and the Perizzite were dwelling in the land. Then Abram said to Lot, please let there be no strife between me and between you, and between my herdsmen and your herdsmen, for we are brothers. And of course, this is uh, all interesting language, mm-hmm. you know, that, that the you're tracking this enmity in two sides and now and this one family. Abram yeah, and, and, right. and this stuff's uh, coming up. And, right. um, and so then Abram said to Lot, please let there be no strife. So verse 9, is not the whole land before you separate from me? If to the left, I will go to the right. And if to the right, I'll go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and saw that the valley of the Jordan was tove. It was, it was well watered is how they, how they translate uh, uh, this. That he, um, And, you know, of course, we've seen, we've heard this, uh, uh, this language before. Uh, and, um, and it's not, it's not good language, not right? Good thing, you know, right. and so, uh, um, and, and so, you know, this lift, lifting up your eyes and looking and making determination and, mm-hmm. you know, that, that's not, um, you know, that's not the, probably the, the way to go. And, uh, and so, um, uh, and, and so, um, this was before the Lord had destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and it was like a garden of the Lord. And so Lot chose for himself the Valley of the Jordan and he journeyed eastward. Thus, they separated from each other. And this goes back to the journeying eastward uh, mm-hmm. that uh, has been happened before. You know, yeah. they cast out of the, uh, out of the, the land, the east, out yeah. of the garden, and mm-hmm. then they journey eastward and build the... So journeying eastward isn't such a great uh, thing here. And right. <laughs> Abram settled in the land of Canaan, while Lot settled in the cities of the valley. And he moved his tents as far as Sodom. And now the men of Sodom were wicked exceedingly and sinners against the Lord. And uh, the Lord said to Abram, after Lot separated from him, now lift up your eyes and uh, look from the place which you're, which you're standing. You'll look to the north and the south and the east and the west. For all the land which you see, I've given to you and to your seed forever. 
and I will make your seed as the dust of the earth. Um, there's three um, different ways uh, that this is, this, you know, Abram's seed is, is talked about. And mm-hmm. uh, one is here, the, the dust of the earth. And, and if you track this language, um, uh, the other is like the stars of the, uh, of the heavens and the third is like the sand of the seashore. And I think those are intentional, right? Mm-hmm. If we just jump forward in the, the story and see how this language is used, uh, this is in Daniel chapter, uh, chapter 12. Um, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the ground will awake to everlasting life, but others to disgrace and everlasting contempt. And so, mm-hmm. you know, this goes back to Genesis chapter three and, and Abram's, you dust, you know, dust Adam's you going return. back to the, yeah. to the dust, dust you are and dust you will return. Mm-hmm. I will make your seed like the, the, like the dust of the, of the, uh, of the ground or the dust of the earth. That That's not such a great right. thing. They'll be numerous, but they'll also die. Mm-hmm. Um, And those who have insight, this is back to Daniel 12, 3, will shine brightly like the brightness of the expanse of heaven. And those um, who lead many uh, to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. I will make your seed like the stars of the heaven, Mm -hmm. right? And so you have not only will they be many, not only will they die, but through faith they will be raised to glory. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he'll also draw all men to himself, men from the nations to himself, from the from the the sand of the you know the sand of the seashore the right. you know out of the sea and, yeah, and so gonna, this imagery is going to develop yeah, yeah this absolutely. imagery is going to develop mm-hmm. in the story uh, and uh, and so I will make your seed like the dust of the earth and if anyone can number the dust of the earth so then shall your seed be numbered arise walk through the land its uh, its length and its breadth and I will give it to you then Abram moved uh, his tent and came to dwell in the oaks of Mamre uh, which are in Hebron. And he built an altar there to the Lord. And it came about, just keep, you know, keep, mm-hmm. you know, just kind of right on rolling because what this, uh, this chapter 14 is about is the separation, right? The, the, the separation of Lot wasn't just chapter 13, right. but it, it continues right into chapter 14. Uh, and we're working with chapter 12, right? So chapter 12, um, go forth from your country, from your relatives, from your father's house to a land which I'll show you and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you, make your name great. Uh, it will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and those who curse you, I will curse. And so Lot has aligned himself uh, with Abram. Mm-hmm. Uh, Abram is going to be in this mediator position in between the Lord and, and the people. And I will bless you. You know, So we're looking for this blessing that comes from the Lord. And that's what this, at the end of this next, this scene here in chapter 14 uh, is going to happen. So it came about in the days uh, of... Uh, of Armfell, the king of uh, of Shiner, there there's this uh, there was a war that breaks out, and this mm-hmm. is the first uh, three verses, uh, and they uh, all those who came as allies into the valley. There's there's this there's this war basically that 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 breaks out, and and so um, uh, they they you know, and this is going to consume the the kings of Sodom and Gomorrah, right? Uh, and uh, and which means it's going to affect Lot, right? So mm-hmm. they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all the food supply and they departed and they also took Lot, Abram's, uh, Abram's nephew, uh, and his possessions and departed for he was living in Sodom. And so there's a scene that uh, that one of my old professors uh, used to show and it was this John Wayne scene <laughs> where he's kind of sitting on this hill and, you know, and, you know, there's something happening down the bottom of the hill. It doesn't really affect John Wayne, but then this, I don't remember exactly how it goes. Something like this: this guy then goes and he strikes this kid, hmm. and the camera goes to John Wayne. He says, well, "Why do you have to go and do that?" <laughs> right now, now it's John <laughs> Wayne's to issue to deal that. with, right? Right. So, so, and he would show it right here at this scene. You know, now, the, the now point Abram's was concerned. none yeah. of this matters, right? right. I mean, the, this, the, none of this is a concern for Abram right. until they go and take Lot. Yeah. You know, and so why'd you have to go so, and do so that? So now Abram, who's John Wayne, says, "Why'd they have to go and do that?" Yeah, right now, good. now this is uh, this is uh, uh, Abram's problem. And so right. he took Lot, Abram's nephew, and his possessions and departed, for he was living in Sodom. Then a fugitive came and told Abram the Hebrew. Now he was living in the Oaks of Mamre, the uh, uh, the Amorite, the brother of uh, of Ashkol, the brother of Arnar, and all the allies. Uh, with Abram. In other words, there's people aligning with Abram. And when Abram heard that his relative had been taken captive, 
He got his men, born in his house, 318, and went in pursuit as far as Dan. Well, this is the place where Dan will be, but Dan's not Dan yet. He's not, so, he's not alive yet. <laughs> yeah, and so uh, remember this was uh, this right. was written for folks who were taking the land, but even then, they, you know, it's not until they uh, take the land. And, mm-hmm. and so he divided his forces against uh, them by night, and uh, and he went up and defeated uh, defeated those who had taken Lot and brought back all the goods, and he brought back his relative Lot and all his possessions and all the women and all the people. And after his return from the defeat uh, of of the, you know these these kings, the king of Sodom went out to meet him, right? Because you know the king of Sodom's like, hey man, you you won the battle for us. No, it doesn't have anything to do with you. It's just I was going down there to rescue <laughs> rescue Lot. Um. Uh, and so he went to, out to meet him at the Valley of Shiva, that is the king's valley, and Melchizedek, the king of of Salem. Now, we're going to run into this name later, uh, Salem. You say, well, I don't know a place called Salem. Well, actually, uh, this place is going to have a little longer name. Uh, Yaru is to contend mm-hmm. with for Salem, contend for Salem. Yaru Shalom, Jerusalem is mm-hmm. this. So this is... Melchi Zedek, Melech is king, Zedek is righteousness. So this king of righteousness, king of shalom, peace, um, uh, went out. So he's a king and he's a priest. Uh, he brought out bread and wine. Uh, now he was a priest of God most high. There's a lot going on here with this yeah. Melchizedek character who's a the, really the, uh, the a type of Christ who walks into the scene. He's clearly... Uh, superior to Abram, mm. um, he's a king and a priest, uh, and he's going to bless Abram. He says, uh, and he blessed him and said, blessed be Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. And he blessed, uh, and blessed be God most high, who has delivered your enemies into your hand. And he gave him a tenth of all. Abram is going to pay Melchizedek a, a tenth of all. And of course, you know, the writer of Hebrews is going to make a giant deal about Melchizedek, uh, Melchizedek in Psalm 110. Mm-hmm. And, and so this character that kind of walks into the scene, um, you know, with with uh, writer of Hebrews is going to say, with no beginning and no end. He's one of the few characters that walks into the story. You don't know where he came from and you don't right. know where he's, where he's going. He doesn't have a genealogy. His death is not recorded. His birth is not recorded. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he's a king priest. But yeah, uh, he's in a place over Abraham, and he's, he's over he's Abram. blessing Abraham. Yeah, right? and so yeah, so he's blessing Abram, and so so this is a type of Christ. He's yeah. he's um, you know he's the first one that uh, that in the Abram uh, section that walks into the story that's greater than Abram. One of the only ones. The next time you see someone over his brothers or over Israel in this story is going to be Joseph. Hmm. Joseph's going. He is a type of Christ, not him. after the fact, but but in that he is over his brothers and he is bringing blessing to the nations and mm-hmm. so so the, the the narrator is is forming what to expect mm-hmm. uh from uh, from this one so so you know the seed that's going to come out of Abram uh is going to be greater than Abram uh, and as the story progresses and we don't know that all here right but as the story progresses this is going to be the true uh king of Jerusalem king of righteousness king priest mm-hmm. of God most high mm-hmm. and uh, and so Abram pays a, a tithe to him and the king of Sodom uh, Sodom said to Abram give the people to me and take the goods for yourself and Abram said to the king of Sodom I have sworn to the Lord God most high possessor of the heaven and earth that I will not take a thread or a sandal thong or anything that is yours lest you say I made Abram rich mm-hmm. Uh, I will take nothing except uh, what the young man have eaten uh, and the share of the men who went with me uh, and their ash call uh, and my, uh, memory. Um, let them take their share. And so hmm. so Abram's certainly learned some things. Yeah. Uh, or his actions, you know, he didn't have a problem with taking anything out of Egypt. Yeah. But now, now he's not going to take things out of the, the land. And we're going to see this play out later. You know, mm-hmm. Israel's going to be delivered from Egypt. They're going to come out with great possessions. And then they're go, going to go into the land. Try to take stuff. And, uh, well, and, and but it's under the ban, yeah, right? They're, they're not, not to, to keep the things in mm-hmm. the, the land. And so mm-hmm. this is a precursor to what's happening uh, later in the story. 
Uh, and so we're, we're, we're walking along with Abram. The reader gets to walk along with Abram as the reader understands what Abram is doing and what he's supposed to be doing. And since Abram is, the promises to Abram are going to be given to Isaac and Isaac to Jacob and Jacob uh, is going to become a nation. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you back in chapter 12. Then what Abram is doing is what Israel's to do, mm-hmm. right? Uh, what the nation is to do. And so yeah. they're to, you know, to, to follow uh, what Abram, when Abram walks uh, faithfully, yeah. they are to, uh, to do, uh, to do the same. And the interesting thing is that they're going to get this, they're going to get this story right before they go into the land. Absolutely. And then they're going to go into the land <laughs> and, you know, and then Aiken's going to do the same thing and try to take possessions from that are under the ban. It, it, got, it starts <laughs> repeating itself in a way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's exactly right. And so, so this is, you know, one of the things that happens to us is we read these stories uh, and we think, well, that has no relevance to us and say, well, let's remember, uh, or there's no direct application. We try to find direct application or something uh, like this, and, and we generalize it and spiritualize it and, mm-hmm. you know, and talk about themes and that type of stuff. Um, these stories had direct relevance oh, yeah. to the original reader, yeah. uh, right? And so so they were learning uh, some some things about, uh, uh, you know, about how they are to... Uh, how they're to to operate uh, yeah. in uh, in the land, especially and, in relationship to these certain nations, right? They're they're, mm-hmm. they're I mean, their their relationship to the people in the land is going to kind of start here, right? With Abram, and you know, they're going to learn how they ought to operate with the Canaanites, how they ought to, you know, it's different depending on the nation, right? Yep, right, y- yeah, yep. And, and and so so uh, so we're we're tracking along in this story. We, we're tracking the promise. We're looking for, for the seed. Lot has separated from Abram. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he lifted up his eyes and he saw that it was. I think I said tov. It's actually the the, the word here is uh, is not tov, but it's well watered. And in those, he's he's lifting up his eyes. He's making determination according to what his eyes see. Uh, he separates from Lot, and uh, you know, probably the what Lot should have said here um, is, um, you know, Abram, I don't care. Uh, that there's strife between I'll sell all the junk, mm-hmm. you know. I love um, uh, what Ruth says to Naomi when mm-hmm. Naomi says, "Go, go back to your people, your gods," you know. And she says, "No, no. Where you go, I go. Your people, my people. Your God, my God. Where you die, I die." And, yeah. You know, and so, so you know, you'll hear, and I've heard people say and have this this understanding or interpretation that you know, um, uh, that Abram shouldn't have taken Lot with him. Well, think about the ramifications of that, right? That that all the families of the earth will be blessed. In other words, if you align yourself with Abram and with the promise to Abram, in other words, you, if you were to say, okay, everybody in the world, point to the one person that there's any hope in of fixing what has gone wrong at creation. Everybody would point to Abram. Mm-hmm. Where's your hope, Abram? Uh, well, Abram's leaving. What should you do? Uh, I'm going with Abram. <laughs> I will align myself with Abram. I will bless the. I, I'm going to bless Abram. In other words, I'm I'm staying right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going to be a servant to Abram. Um, you know, it's not. Um, you know, well, uh, wish him luck and let me let me know how that Jesus thing turns out, Abram. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, you know, you know, it just makes right. it makes no no right. sense and. Uh, and so the the tension in the story, and we're going to pick this up next time. The tension or the problem in this story is you're still looking for, for the seed, uh, and, and this is going to drive kind of our next section in the story, chapters fifteen, uh, and you know sixteen and seventeen, as as we're looking for, for this promised seed that's coming forth from Abram and from Sarah. Uh, and we're going to learn that uh, that Abram and Sarah come up with a different plan over there in chapter yeah. sixteen. That's going to be rejected by the Lord, and yeah. and the the plan's going to be re- re- reaffirmed in chapter seventeen. And that's going to flow right in through the the next section of chapter you know twenty one with the birth of Isaac, right? Uh, and uh, and so forth. So yeah. so that's that's where this story's headed. But but stick with us. So next yeah. uh, next time we'll be in uh, in chapter. Of fifteen, and that's uh, that's a big uh, big chapter. Yeah, but uh, big chapter for but sure. That's it for this time. So it's almost like it's almost like uh, Abram in in fourteen, especially thirteen, fourteen, is sort of learning his place, 
right? Learning his role as he becomes this nation. And now 15, we got to multiply seed. Yeah. Right? We got to watch the promise. We got to make a nation now. Yeah. The right? plot, the plot's the plot moved. And, move and, and old Lot's going to go right back to Sodom and Gomorrah. Right. And we're going to play this scene over again. Yeah, we're going to see that again. Yep. You know, because now Lot's down there in Sodom and Gomorrah. They're still as wicked as they ever were. They're, mm-hmm. you know, they're evil uh, in the eyes of the Lord. And, and so the Lord says, all right, that hadn't changed. We're going to wipe them off the map. Uh, well, should we keep this from Abram? No, because Abram is functioning as this mediator of blessing to mm-hmm. the nations. And so, you know, let's let him in on what we're doing. And and Abram says, you wouldn't write, wipe out the, the righteous with the wicked, would you? And, and uh, you know, what if there's 100 righteous and he negotiates down to 10? And and this is over in chapter, uh, chapter 18 and heading into chapter 19. Uh, and Abram... Uh, negotiates on behalf of the righteous, and the two messengers go and deliver Lot, yeah. righteous Lot, yeah. and and we're going to learn a lot of theology yeah. about uh, what makes one righteous, and right. and uh, that'll be you know so yeah. so Lot has been introduced into the story yeah. um, for a lot of reasons, um, uh, you know, ultimately the Lot story is going to end with with two nations mm. that are going to be uh, border countries to Israel and that we're going to pass through those nations when they when Israel goes and takes the land. So where did yeah. these nations come from? But there's also a mediator role that, that's being, yeah. uh, you know, kind of explained. And so, yeah. so this story is all on the move. And, and we've said this every time, keep reading. Uh, yes. Keep reading the story. Yes. Read on ahead of where we are yeah. and see if you can make yeah. this make, uh, make sense yeah. because... We're just tracking. Uh, we're tracking the plot in the narrative, and yeah. and uh, and uh, if you're reading ahead of us, mm-hmm. and that that would be good. Yeah, then you can a- make some sense of it before we even get there. Yeah, this is gonna like we say every time. It's gonna snowball. Yep. It's gonna keep going. Where I mean, there's so much about who Israel is as a nation that starts right here in Absolutely. these chapters that you start to learn what it means that Israel's a servant, you know, of the Lord, and they're supposed to represent God to the nations and supposed to mediate between the nations. That's all starting with Abraham. And that's going to be also become true of the entire nation as, as it progresses. And so, uh, and that's going to develop over the Pentateuch, over the first five books. A lot of that's going to happen. So, uh, so, so know these details, yep. recognize them because we're going to reference them a lot. Yep, absolutely. So, absolutely. All right. Well, next week we will pick up in chapter 15. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you then. For more resources, visit teachmethebible.com or download our app from any app store. You can partner with Teach Me the Bible in helping the people of God understand the word of God by subscribing and sharing with others. Thank you for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast.